President Biden will travel to Poland next week to mark one year since the uh, Russia invasion of Ukraine. More than 8 million Ukrainians in that time have fled their country That's since the war began in February of 2022, February 24th to be exact. And as I saw for myself shortly after the invasion, it was the fastest mass exodus from a European country since World War II. And the vast majority of the people coming over the border are women, teens, and younger children. The men stay behind. Poland was the destination for about a million and a half of those Ukrainians seeking safety. And a new MTV documentary, Don't Leave Me Behind, stories of young Ukrainian survival, follows the lives of teenage refugees in Poland. In this clip, 18-year-old Sasha talks about fleeing her country. Take a look. My classmates asked me about how it was when war was beginning. I began to explain how I go to Poland, how I feel when the rocket was crashing. I go in car and I sit. The uh, city was in fire. In one moment, everything can change. And everything can end. The documentary is director Nathaniel Lezra joins us now. Nathaniel, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having um, me. You were in Spain when yes. Russia invades and the exodus begins. Yes. What goes through your mind at that moment? Um, immediately, I wanted to focus on the human side of it. I, I noticed that there was a lot of geopolitics, a lot of statistical analysis. There wasn't a lot of discussion of the human impact on these people fleeing. Yeah. When I was at the border, uh, one of the crossings in Poland, it wasn't where the train was coming over. It was where people were coming over on foot after giving up because of these long convoys of cars. Talk about some of the experiences you heard, because I saw only one portion of what is out there. Sure. Um, bottlenecks people in traffic for weeks on both sides. Um, people, Sasha talks in the film about how, and this is a particularly harrowing um, experience that I found. Uh, you know, she was in this bottleneck and there was a skirmish happening to the left of her in the woods and on the right of her in the field and above her in the oh, sky. Okay. So there was this position that they were in where they had literally no autonomy, no control over their immediate future. And they, as she says in the film, have, they have to sit and wait without options. What so, you do so beautifully, Nat, in this, in this documentary is because when people look at the images, you see burned out buildings, devastation, rocks, rubble. You really take us to see the humanity of the people, because these guys are still kids. These yeah. young men and women are still kids who dream of dancing, who dream of playing. And what they want more than anything is to go back home. But they're also afraid. They're also still very afraid, and rightfully so. Yeah, the resilience that you encounter is extraordinary. And resilient, yes. So you found a support group. Katya was someone who had set up a support group for these young people to go and talk. Yeah, we did. It was a, it's a foundation in Poland. It's specifically aimed at um, Ukrainian young people who have fled, brave people who have seen the absolute worst. Yeah. One of the dimensions of this is not only losing your country for an indeterminate amount of time, possibly forever, the limbo. but it, it's all women, children, younger children, teens, because the men, not by choice, but by circumstance and law, I believe, in Ukraine, they stay behind to fight. Uh, talk to us about that dimension of loss, because it's, it's not your country, it's your family, it's this role in your life that's hard to define but so important. Yeah, it, it, it compounds the trauma that people are feeling, right? It's not only I have to flee, I have to leave this life that I've built, it's I don't know when I'm gonna see my dad again, if I will. There are people on military reserve who are on the front line, Sasha and Dasha's fathers are both, um, Sasha's father is on the front line in, a, in, in hot zones, increasingly hot zones, and Dasha's father is um, on reserve back in, in Ukraine. Yeah, Gail mentioned those teens, and the teen said it's not a matter of if, it's when we go back to yes. Ukraine. So there is this optimism buried underneath the fear and despair. Um, how do they envision their future when you were talking with them? You know, they talk a lot about how they want to, you know, now that they've fled, they're going to pursue their European educations. They're going to sort of figure out what they want in life. They've seen so much already, so young, hmm. but they are going to go back. Hmm. Is it realistic? You know, a couple of them said, we're, uni we're Ukrainians, we can never be broken. Is it realistic? Because they dream of parks and open spaces of what was. Hmm. I think, think it is realistic. Change, is it? I think, I think it's realistic in that... From what I've seen and, and the Ukrainians that I've met, they cannot, they have not and cannot be broken. So they're going to go back and they're going to take what they've learned and build and build. What did you learn? I learned the value of 
working with Ukrainians and of listening and passing the microphone to people who uh, need to take control of their narrative. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And they have. Nathaniel Lezra, thank you very much. It's a powerful documentary. Yeah. Don't Leave Me Behind. It airs commercial-free this Tuesday on MTV, which, like CBS, is part of Paramount Global.